The government's proposed shake-up of the planning laws in England has provoked howls of outrage from countryside groups. They claim a new presumption in favour of development will see bulldozers grinding across greenfields. And last week, the minister in charge accused campaigners of nihilistic selfishness. Well, he's now adopted a more conciliatory tone, saying he will talk to campaigners about details of the bill, but he insists there won't be a U-turn. In a moment, the minister will debate the campaigner. But first, Jane Deeth reports from Sefton near Liverpool, where local residents fear that Greenbelt land is under threat. In Sefton, in Merseyside, the council could be forced to loosen its green belt to make room for thousands of new homes. Today, the government suddenly offered to meet the countryside lobby to explain and rephrase its pro-growth message. In the forward to its planning framework, the government says in a competitive world, we have to give the go-ahead to development without delay. But that's horrified rural campaigners who say it's as good as giving the green light to developers to sprawl from the towns all over precious countryside like this. Thousands have signed a national trust petition against the changes. The planning minister, Greg Clark, initially fought fire with fire, accusing them of nihilistic selfishness. Today, he offered to go over the proposals with them, but denied there'd be a U-turn on development. We can't be ambivalent about growth. We are not building enough homes for the people needing them for the first time. We are contributing to homelessness, to overcrowding, to poverty. The government says the green belt's safe, but Colin Reader lives on the edge of threatened green belt. He fears he'll have no power if the dice are loaded in favour of development. A developer has sort of outlined a particular development he's got in mind. You factor that in. And then when it comes to submitting a planning application, there's a small change in his proposals that the local community perhaps sees as significant. And suddenly, where are they? If it's already sort of pushed through the development plan and there's the presumption in favour, can they then challenge these, these detailed changes? Greg Clark says, yes, they can. They know their area best, and if, if an area uh, of land uh, is within their area and they think that they would think it's a useful place to, to build perhaps a small number of, uh, of homes to keep a village viable, that's for them to decide, but there will be no imposition. No imposition, but perhaps an impossible choice. The campaign to protect rural England, who Greg Clark says have objected to every change in planning policy he can remember, says councils like Sefton will be forced to eat into their green borders. This one is a very typical local authority with a big amount of green belt that he's going to have to say, well, it's not the government that's going to encroach on the green belt, it's us, the local authority. So, government fine, not our problem. Local authority, oh... It is. It's us that's had to do it. People who can't afford a home might say, if the brown fields have run out, dig up the green ones. The National Home Builders Federation has criticised campaigners for scaremongering when millions of people need homes. But the local MP says people should be allowed to fight for the places they love. Of course people understand the need for housing and of course we need to look after those people who, who, who need houses but not just at the expense of concreting over the countryside. The government insists that's not going to happen, but the English countryside has never been so prized by a government which needs to build on it and by those who would preserve it. Well, this row over planning has broken out because this government, just like the last one, has failed to close the gap between the number of new homes being built and the number that are required to keep up with demand. After stagnating during Labour's first term in office, the number of new houses that builders started working on each year in England rose to about 180,000 by 2007. The credit crunch saw that plummet to just 70,000 a year. The numbers rose as the recession eased, but still in the last 12 months less than 100,000 homes have been started. But the government estimates 232,000 homes are needed each year just to keep up with the growth in households. And ministers point out that if you double the number of homes in the UK from just over 26 million to 52 million, the amount of land built on would only increase from 9% to 10.5%.